On today's episode, we break down the upcoming Thursday night matchup and we jump into the mailbag. Your questions, a lot of very difficult quarterback questions on this show. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and enjoy. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore is here, Mike, the fantasy hitman. I am Andy Holloway. We welcome you in. We're thrilled to have you with us today. Not usually, but today, thrilled. Thrilled about Make it. Making an exception for today? Yeah. You're talking about the um, fourth largest sports podcast on Spotify for the entire year, Jason. I think we're thrilled every day. Oh. I think we're thrilled every darn day. Sounds like the people are thrilled. The people are the people are thrilled. We've got uh, it's are those those dumb Kelseys beat us out. The Kelseys yeah. beat us out. Yeah, thanks to Taylor Swift. Yeah, <laughs> am, I, we, am I right? They didn't do anything themselves. <laughs> Honestly, why couldn't any of these deucers land a couple dates? Yeah, with Taylor. Yeah, hey, yeah, Brooks, uh, hit up Michelle Pfeiffer. Wait, what? <laughs> Mich- what? that'll do it. Where did That's gonna she- move the needle. Where did Michelle Pfeiffer come from? She's in a movie right now. Is she? I, I thought maybe so. she was in like a Paul Giamatti movie, and that was the correlation. Mm, that would have been a, a really good cut. Um, Deucer's Alley, they're, they're very festive right now, or at least Brooksy has his uh, December uh, Christmas cap on. You can yeah. see it there. Owl yeah, guys, looking gonna, ready for Christmas, <laughs> all black. That's I was right. going to say, we spent as much the, as we could, and we got Taylor on the one episode this year. The, oh, oh, we did. Okay. We did yeah. our best. We got, we got budget Taylor Swift. Yeah, so d- the judge is looking good, and uh, you know Al's our lump of coal back there. And uh, are you guys in the? Is the Christmas spirit like present? Do you is, feel is it, it jangling? Yet? It is not there for me. Oh no! Yet. Which is see, it's an organic. It just it, happened. It, it happens. I mean, my tree's been up. My house is decorated. Yeah. My lights are on. Just wait. I'm like, I'm waiting for it to to come upon me. It didn't it, help that it was hot yesterday. Right. Like actually hot. No, that doesn't help the Christmas spirit. I'm, I'm sorry, Snowland of America. Nobody hangs their lights when it's hot outside. <laughs> Do you think that the Christmas spirit? It's a little bit more like you have to opt into the music now because, you know, when we were growing up, there you just put the radio on, right? And people were playing the Christmas music. Now you'd have to like get in your car. I, and say Christmas music. Yeah, which I do almost every day. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. But that's not getting it done. That's just not my my mm. my heart needs to grow three sizes. Oh, okay. Well, we'll work on it. Thanks. Uh, today we've got uh, quite a bit going on. We're going to preview the Thursday night game. We've got NFL news to talk about. Uh, waivers for your leagues are going to go through or have gone through. Uh, I'm in a real predicament in our league oh, because do uh, they decided to move. Mr. Amari Cooper into a questionable mm-hmm. tag. Okay. Who he has a full on concussion. Yeah. But he's questionable, which I get. Yeah. But now my roster is it's it's too jammed. Too jammed up to make to make the moves I want. Well I could sacrifice <laughs> I could sacrifice, but I would just drop Dak. <clears throat> drop Dak, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need a spot. We had a uh, new Dynasty podcast drop today as well. So when you're done with this one, uh, you can head over there, listen to the Mm -hmm. Dynasty pod. And um, Brooks, anything I'm forgetting here at the top? Nah. Okay. Let's move on. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. All right, uh, let's kick it off with Mike here. Who's your hungry right. hungry for more candidate this week? I'm going to go with rookie Dontavian Wicks of the Green Bay Packers. He was a fifth-round pick, so this is a player who is mostly off the radar for redraft purposes, really low on uh, just your priority list, even in dynasty leagues. 
but over the course of the year, like the guy can actually play. The snaps have been low, but some of the metrics that we look for uh, for a player who, if they receive an upgraded opportunity, you're hoping that that translates then into far more production. We've had four targets in five straight games, and the targets per route run in those five games have been sensational. We're talking about you know, averaging high 20% in target per route run. That's that's a fantastic number. And with the injury to Christian Watson, like Dontavian Wicks seems to be the next man up. He, you know, like I, I tried to quickly look at just a, you know, the barometer of of rookie versus Quentin Johnston. Dontavian Wicks has more yards than Quentin. He has a higher single game. We had three for 91 against the Chargers. He's a big play guy waiting to happen. And I think that with this opportunity here, he's going to be uh, an interesting decision for for deep leagues and DFS. Jason, who's your hungry for more candidate? Well, I think maybe for the first time this year, I am not going with Yeah, this a, is wild. I'm not going with a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or tight end. I'm hungry for more of the Miami Dolphins defense. Their offense has been great, but they have been – outstanding over the last three weeks they're they're the number one defense in fantasy points scored averaging 15 points a game and you know they've got Jalen Ramsey back Uh, too much is being focused on their offense their defense has been scoring they've been sacking teams like crazy the last three weeks they've got 12 combined sacks they've got two touchdowns and you go okay well they played Aiden O'Connell and the Jets and Sam Howell this last week but I'm hungry for more of it because they get to eat a banana this week. <laughs> banana Rama, Will Levis. Oh, no, uh, that's your potassium. Your potassium is going to be really, really high. Um, and then they get the Jets again. So I, oh I, my goodness, they're going to take you. How uh, will they stop Zach Wilson though? Well, I know you're kind of TBD by then, on who it is. Yeah, is it Wilson by that week? Well, they signed uh, Brett Rippin, right? Uh oh, B oh. Rippin uh, farts is back, baby. <laughs> Brett Rippin farts. <laughs> please play and start against these Miami Dolphins. But they've been scoring a lot of points. I think it keeps up this week and next week um, to get you to the semifinals in your fantasy championships. It is it is actually really hard to um, stay water with the defenses sometimes. you like Because we talk about being prepared. So a lot of that times, a lot of the time you, you sign defenses early, and then you've kind of like mentally – like you signed in the Chiefs, right? Oh, my gosh, the Chiefs are killing me. And and so you, you see the <laughs> schedule and you say, this is going to work out. Like they played Aiden O'Connell. It, it didn't go it, so well it, for them. It did not. And, and it did not go well for me. Yeah, and so you um, you kind of hope that you have it lined up. But you need to stay water. You need to be willing to adjust to those type of situations. The, the Browns have been bad the last couple of weeks because mm-hmm. there's no Denzel Ward and then Miles Garrett's been banged up. Like – you have to be willing to make those pivots and not just lock in when you get new information. So- I like to look at a three-week window this time of year when I'm looking at my schedule-adjusted stats and and looking at, at streamers, starters, whoever, I, especially with defenses, I like looking at the last three weeks. And that, that was kind of what illuminated the Dolphins to me because they're literally number one over that span. And I know this one will make Mike happy, but my hungry for more candidate at at tight end is Evan Ingram Mm -hmm. because we just saw his best game of the season, his first top five performance at tight end on the year, which is shocking. He was in the midst of a six-game run where he was outside the top 12 at the position, uh, and he was a fantasy hero last year. Like There there was a, um, a lot of championships celebrated on the back of Evan Ingram. Christian Kirk is out. He needs surgery. It's a core muscle issue. He's not going to be a part of this offense. So when you look at Evan Ingram, you're talking about eight, nine, ten targets a game and uh, a ton of potential with this, you know, especially in the the end of the playoff schedule, Tampa Bay, Carolina, uh, those two weeks. I am kind of excited about what he can do in this offense. How do you feel about the the potential quarterback change here if Trevor Lawrence isn't able to suit up, which – I think right now we're very skeptical that he will play this week. Um, I, I will say if he does, it could work out really well for Evan Ingram because then if his mobility is limited, the time in the pocket, you know, getting deep shots down to, uh, you know, Calvin Ridley and Zay Jones might be a little bit more difficult than just grabbing Evan Ingram on a short little crosser 
Um, but yeah, I mean you, that that favors Beathard as well. I mean, if you're the friend of the quarterback, you're in the shallow area, you can come off tight end screens. Uh, Beathard taking more of the check down route when needed. I I think Evan Ingram is very much in play, and I I'm hungry for more performances like this where he can actually, you know, Mike Mike's been the Trey McBride truther of the century. And then he made the comment that he played Trey McBride. McBride had a great game. He lost points playing Trey McBride over Evan Ingram this past week. I no, the, the other way. Oh, it was. It was, it was Evan Ingram uh, was point two points behind Trey McBride. And you played McBride? I No, I, I had to play. I got backed into playing Ingram because of the, the injury. injury. Oh, okay. So I had okay. to. It was, it was a weird lineup decision where I got forced into it. I wanted T. McBee in that lineup. And it, the, after the morning, it was uh, my guy just just had himself a monster game. And I'm, I'm like, uh, Jay, I think I'm going to regret because I had laid it out for him. And I'm like, I, I think I'm going to regret playing uh, Evan Engram. He's like, of course you will. He has, he's, he's got like 90 yards of touchdown. And then Evan Engram was basically you that. Know, it was great. Maybe you guys can help me on this. I, I think maybe Mike just loves tight ends, like the position. I, I mean, like I like Troutman and Jarwin and McBride and Ingram. Like the list is it's pretty extensive on I it's not necessarily the the position on the field. It's it's so hard to find a functional diamond in the rough at the tight end position. And I like that challenge. Well, yeah, I it feels great when you get one. Yes. That works. So that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get almost almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Running backs? No. Mm -hmm. nope. No. No. Ribs? Yeah. Yes, please. Oh, let's get some uh, ribs. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. And Al Borland, no, I am not hungry for... Evan Ingram to whoop me in League of Record this week. No. Also, I don't care what happens this week <laughs> in League of This is a throwaway week. I mean, I'm going to whoop your butt for no reason. Yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> it's now, funny. Josh you and I were from... talking. It doesn't matter to me, and I don't think it matters to you, but Josh was like, I really want Andy to lose because I don't want him to have confidence going into the next round yeah <laughs> <laughs> like like this is a real sport and your, your psyche is yeah. going to affect your play. Yeah, he was he was doing some big trash talking to me yesterday, and we're on opposite ends of the bracket. So I mean, the Foot Clan, we could get. Oh, a we Papa get Josh, Papa Josh, the betrayer versus me for the title if Oof. things play out the right way. Yeah, well, but disagree. you know, without me having confidence, yeah, I don't your, know how I could possibly your get your players there. will not perform if you in Arizona watching them on television are emotionally damaged look i wish i had i wish there were some momentum points that i would get like a five point boost next week for momentum um i mentioned it earlier here's some news for you doug peterson said christian kirk's gonna need surgery on his core muscle injury we're not gonna see christian kirk this year again Najee harris injury report dmp on tuesday that's Th thursday night game yeah this is this is one to really watch i i, I could see him missing um i mean th this is a late Full did not participate, so Jalen Warren could become a little bit more exciting in a game that you don't expect a ton of points, but if there's only one one guy there, then uh, it, it could be all right. And Najee Harris, super stoked to be playing with Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> oh, yeah, the quotes. Yeah, what did he say? He said, how's his leadership? Yeah. He said, "That's fi it's fine? It's fine, I, I guess. guess. <laughs> it's fine, I guess. I mean, Najee, come on, man. How, would, how would you Dude. describe his uh, leadership style? That's when you vocal, start. I guess. Yeah. That's when you start talking about something else. If you don't want to answer that question, Dude. you just say, you know, Mitch, he sure he sure fights hard out there. It's super Najee. Like if if you haven't experienced Najee interviews, the guy is a delight. I love him. Yeah. Well, he might not be on the field this week. It's it's yeah. tough because if he, you know, if he does have an injury, they wouldn't practice him because they'd try to get him ready for Thursday. So we'll keep. Uh, Brooks says he's going to keep watching. For news, the Chargers are officially opening Joshua Palmer's 21-day practice window. Okay, that is great. Herbert needs him desperately. Yeah, that's bigger news for Herbert. Um, I love. I thought I had found a diamond in the rough with Palmer before the injury. There is opportunity there. We don't know when in that 21-day window he'll come back. Uh, it, it took him a little while. Week eight was the last we saw him, so we'll see. 
Joshua Palmer could be back sooner than later, and they need somebody to catch the ball, not just kind of juggle it. Brian Dable said Tommy DeVito will start in week 14 against the Packers. Okay. okay. The Jets are releasing Tim Boyle, and they signed Brett Rippon. Oh, you know you wanted to say it. <laughs> no, no, no. I have to be the, uh, you know, the tempered, measured, give the guy his regular name without the word farts attached guy. Brett Rippon farts. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, isn't that the perfect signing, though? After oh. what we saw in the field for that team, they're like, yes. Yeah, it's incredibly lateral. The NFL Network, uh, Tom Pelissero reporting the Packers have signed Kenyon Drake for their practice squad. I don't know if that's a sign of uh, Aaron Jones' health. Yeah, you should put at least one eyebrow up for this Well, one. I mean, maybe that makes Patrick Taylor a slightly interesting desperation, deep league, close your eyes, click the button because no one else is left kind of guy. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we talked about it on yesterday's show, but, you know, Aaron Jones missed this last week and Taylor was irrelevant. Yeah, I mean – there are players, though, that were irrelevant, that become relevant, that when a team is ready to make a change, keep Mitchell, anybody, you know, that yep. McLaughlin, the players you don't see coming. I'm just trying to get deep, sure. Jason, yeah. trying to get nasty. Go ahead. Nasty. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Thursday Night Breakdown. All right, guys, I have decided to take a different approach to the words I say after announcing this matchup. Okay. The New England Patriots at 2-10 and 10 mm. are taking on the 7-5 and five Pittsburgh Steelers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Pittsburgh minus 6, and the over-under is 60. Mm. Oh, wait, 30. Divided by Sorry, two. 30. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I believe by kickoff this line can get in the 20s. This, this was at 31 and a half, and I was going to bet the under on it. I mean, this is – um. look, here, here's here's the uh, glass half full, number one. My hungry for more candidate before Evan Ingram was going to be Ezekiel Elliott. He is playing in this game. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel Elliott had a very nice performance last week. He is going to be the guy. I wish I had him to slot into lineups over the next few weeks. 69% uh, of snaps, very nice, 17 for 52. Um, but I'm more interested in those receptions. Those receptions are going to be uh, part of his game moving forward. The team doesn't have pass catchers they can trust. Even Devontae Parker didn't mention it in the news. Limited again in practice. Demario um, is, you know, still dealing with the concussion, still in protocol. So Ezekiel Elliott might be most of their offense. I, I think he's a very good play. You know, there it's it's ironic for such a low scoring projected game that you know people are, might not be excited about. There are relevant fantasy assets here: uh, Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, uh, Deontay. Well, maybe Najee. May, may, maybe, but I'm saying players that are usual, normal, played fantasy assets, and and Zeke. Zeke really seems like a, a very important piece right now. You think he's probably got like a baseline of around 10 points. And and if a touchdown is scored, which I know is no guarantee, you would imagine it, Zeke has the highest odds to be the touchdown scorer. So let's stay with the running backs as your, your positivity here. Pittsburgh is, you know, they're six-point favorites. You know, the weird thing is, is that I don't know if you knew this. No team has given up fewer points than the New England Patriots over the last four weeks. I, I did. Did you know that they have held their opponents the last three weeks to 10 or fewer points and lost all three games? Think about that. That feels bad. It's like 1930s football. They're calling, they're calling the Jets, and they're like, the Jets defense, and being like, guys, this sucks. <laughs> uh, but Jalen Warren is worth starting, especially if he has the opportunity all to himself. Last week, it was about opportunities. They were not there because they were down by a lot and it just didn't materialize. But he did look good on those opportunities. I think he was like 9 for 59 or something to that extent. Um, and we've got the Najee injury. So I think both running backs, we can say, 
over under be darned. Mm -hmm. Let's play the running back. I think you could play three running backs in this game, and you definitely can play both DSTs. Uh, like we just mentioned, the Patriots' defense has been very, very good over the last month. Um, this is against Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, you tell me they don't get a couple picks here and an opportunity to score a touchdown. You know, you want to know how the over under is hit and it hits the over defensive touchdowns. Yeah, no question. I mean, this game six nothing last week for New England, so not a lot of excitement. Like Pat Fryermuth is out for me this week. Okay. Um, I'm not willing. It's a, it's a to tough do, matchup for not him, willing yeah. to do the dance. Now we'll say for Deontay Johnson. Yeah, what it, about the wideouts, Mike? It is a small sample over the last couple of seasons of games with Pickett versus games with Mitch Trubisky, but the games with Mitch, Deontay Johnson has been better. We're talking uh, seven point eight targets versus ten point seven. So, you know, like if we get an extra three targets this week for Deontay Johnson, that's a that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I, I you know, he, he went out hurt, came back in last week's game. You saw Pickens involved early with uh, Pickett. But, you know, I don't think you can start. Like, what, what are you doing with Pickens? Uh, it's – I don't think it's the worst play in the world, I, as in I don't believe he will submarine you. It it just doesn't feel like this is the type of a ceiling game where you're – you're putting Pickens in, you know, with that that conf that personal confidence that you know translates into your player having a good game. Why now? I need to ask a more important question here. Why did Kyle decide to give us TMI on the punter situation in this game? Because <laughs> this is what Kyle does. I'm looking at the breakdown of the game, and he wants to point out that Presley Harvin the third for the Steelers. Mm -hmm. Heaviest punter ever drafted at wow. two, 255 pounds. That's a beef boy. Yeah. And uh, he's averaging 250.2 yards per game punting Look, if your league has punters. And if someone happen, if the return man app happens to come at Presley Harvin. Oh, you're getting smoked. I mean, try it. Try Presley Harvin. You're going to get laid out. I can't believe we have punter stats over here. This is what people show up for, Andy. That's what the number four well, the, overall I, sports show. I do think these might be the stars of this game. <laughs> I guess we need to feature the potential game MVPs. Yeah. So, in that case, Bryce Beringer. Yeah, tell me about him. Longest NFL punt of 2023. He's got one. 79 yards. 79 yards. Good yeah. job, Bryce. What a punt. Tied for the most punts inside the 20? Ooh, and looking at this picture, yeah. looking at this picture, I'm wondering what his prescription is. I would tell you his eyes are protected. They are. Uh, tied for the most punts inside the 20. Yeah. Well, when you get a lot of opportunities. Beringer v. Harvin the third. On it, Thursday night. It is going to be an old-school defensive battle. Here's the final thing I'll say to the positive. There are a bunch of months during the year that football isn't played. Yeah. And, and so this, we is, get... this is not one of the days that football is not played. Yeah. No, we get it. We get football. <laughs> we get football. Look, um, I'll be watching. You'll be watching. <laughs> yeah, no, no matter what we say, yeah, the people yeah. listening to this Dude, show, they'll be watching. I'm not missing out on Presley Harvin the third. No yeah. chance. Um, all right, quick break. Back with some mailbag questions. I think we pumped the people up. I think that's what we just did. Yeah, yeah. I thought I punted the people up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let's jump in. Mailbag. mailbag. Oh no, that sucked. I didn't do a flourish. I know, that sucked. I, I feel yeah. it. Like, the mm. flourish is part oh, of it. Oh. The flourish, yeah, mm. okay. <laughs> Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, yeah. Much better. Yeah, I, I, I do feel like you didn't Let's give. Punt. You didn't give the first one. You're all, like, you were. You cut it off quick. Just showing you what you wanted. Yeah. I, I apologize. Asked for and received. <laughs> yeah. Careful what you wish for. If you have a question for the show, go to the website. Uh, click the submit a question button. That is the fantasyfootballers.com. You can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Kick it off with a voicemail. Hey, ballers. 10-man PPR. Need an RB2 start this week. Brees Hall or Keaton Mitchell must <laughs> win to get into the playoffs. Thanks. Oh, no. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness gracious. Bruce I mean, Hall or Keaton 
Mitchell. We've got this uh, example last week, Jason, where on the show we said, look, your start of the week, Brock Purdy. Maybe that's a better play than Jalen Hurts. It would have been mm-hmm. by about 15, mm-hmm. 20 fantasy points. Here's the Brees Hall, Keaton Mitchell. Like, Well, thankfully, thankfully, um, last time everything was set up for Brock Purdy. It was the greatest matchup imaginable. Um, this is not the same for Keaton Mitchell. The The Los Angeles Rams are pretty decent against the run. He's splitting time. This doesn't seem like a smash play. Now, Keaton Mitchell can outscore Brees Hall. He did this last week, but he still did not hit 10 fantasy points. I think you want... Yeah, Mike, what are you saying about the rankings? So, I pulled up my rankings because I wanted to see, you know, where was I before the show started? And Brees Hall is one spot ahead of Keaton Mitchell right now. I like I have Mitchell cranked up a, a good bit here for over under and just game script and the way that he's trending. So this is a hilariously terrible question to have to ask yourself in this week. Last four oh. weeks, last four weeks points per game. Keaton Mitchell eleven point nine. Bryce uh, Bryce Hall or Brees Hall. Uh, Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Brees Hall, 10.2. Four games span. The, I couldn't find – I'll just tell you what I would do. That's the best situation we could do. If I yeah. had those two players, I'm playing Brees Hall. Yeah, I think uh, I think everyone is. You've got big play potential from either guy, but I would much rather pre- prefer the matchup of uh, the, the Houston Texans as well as the volume that Brees Hall gets versus Keaton Mitchell on a usual basis. Now, I know he's been extremely – disappointing, inefficient, ineffective, but I, I would definitely play Brees Has Hall. Has any of what has transpired for Brees Hall over the last handful of days affected how you would look at him in a dynasty league? Um, yeah, when it comes to fear, uh, I certainly have worries. He he is uh, one of my dynasty running backs in our main dynasty league. Jameer Gibbs, Brees Hall in a fresh dynasty startup draft. I would – I would take Gibbs. I think at this point you have to uh, – I'm not confident in the future of the offense of the Jets, even with Aaron Rodgers hopefully being the quarterback of next year, but you just don't know, whereas the the Detroit Lions seem like they are set up for future offensive success. Their offensive line is intact and under contract. Their, uh, their situation is just really healthy right now. So I, I, I would lean towards the Gibbs side. I do think there are much brighter days ahead for Brees Hall. I'm not anti Brees Hall. You know that's against who I am. Yeah. Um, but I you worry, man. You worry because the offensive line does not get enough credit for how bad the quarterback play has been, how bad the running back has been. The the Jets offensive line is non existent. Yeah, and Mike, would would you start Brees Hall? I well, yes I would I have Brees one spot ahead of Keaton Mitchell and it, the, the matchup with with Houston is it's fine. Well, let, let's look at another tough decision. Instagram question: What level of underpants do I need to sit Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs? Oh man! Mm. <laughs> so he gets to play Buffalo, the Patriots, the Raiders, and Cincinnati. That's that's the remainder of his fantasy schedule. He has not been the the Patrick Mahomes that you drafted. He has not been the Patrick Mahomes of his entire career. Uh, it's uh, points per game. We're at. I'm showing in a four point eighteen and a half points per game, and that's 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 not even close to what you're hoping for with Mahomes. But it's what are your options? If somehow your other option, like realistically, you could have. You know, could have Brock Purdy. Is there a chance that on you're looking at weak matchups? And okay, you're going, so week fifteen. I'm, yeah, give week it to fifteen. Me. You've got Brock Purdy plays the Cardinals. Ha, easy, right. easy start of Brock Purdy. Yeah, over over Patrick Mahomes playing the Patriots. Not I mean, even I, a second thought. Yeah, but but that's I think week, Brock Purdy. Is that week fifteen. That's yeah, the that's first week, week okay. of the fantasy playoffs. Um, but better hope you have the buy Mahomes manager. Brock yeah. Purdy is very easy. Let, let's let's make it more difficult. The literal best matchup for quarterbacks is right now the Philadelphia Eagles because right. they score a lot of points and their secondary is trash. That's what we just saw Brock Purdy do. Week 15, you've got Patrick Mahomes against the Patriots or the matchup that the Eagles have, 
is a playing at home Geno Smith. Mahomes. Can, I'll go Mahomes. Geno there. Smith. Wow. I couldn't do it. I could not bench not, Patrick Mahomes. Geno's been Gino. too I mean, maybe maybe Geno comes out and has like another game this week and we're, we're like, oh, okay, you know, we're, we're more confident. But it's been a, such a brutal year for Geno. That yeah, some of his games he ends up with the amount of points Mahomes has, and that's <laughs> that's disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Uh you would man, you could have the stones to the, the play stones, Gino. The stones are in New England and New England's number one against quarterbacks. I get it. So, you know, Mahomes is not necessarily taking advantage of good matchups right now. Yeah. Didn't he just play, you know, and he just played Philly, yeah. right? So, so yes. the matchup where you said that the number one quarterback matchup is Philly. He's he fifth, had a, 15th. He had 177 passing yards. Yeah, I mean, I know he uh, – and maybe maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's stupid. And, and, yes, the pain of getting that wrong would be tremendously worse with Mahomes on your bench if he threw for 424 and 4, something that Geno can't do. But, you know, he's going to play Buffalo the week before. If it's another dud yeah. and Geno has another good game this week, the, that's when I would pull the trigger. Put Rice on the field. They, they gave him the ball more. It, it, he's not, no, he's not talking about the player. He's saying, like, throw <laughs> Rice on the field. <clears throat> Just really get the birds down there. Yeah, get the birds all no, over the like, field. I, I know they're giving him the ball more, but he's still not a full-time player. I have a – I mean, Rashi Rice can't solve this problem. Solve? No, but I he, think he, he is can help. Their, he is their Zay Flowers. That That's his impl – that's his – part of the offense and, and that hasn't been enough for for Lamar either yeah. he, he's not he's not like a Jefferson tank Dell no no like he's not a he's not a downfield threat like he he is being used like rookie year Michael Pittman or like this year Zay Flowers and it's not enough in the yardage department for Patrick Mahomes like it just isn't I I do think that it would help the offense and it would help get the part of this Patrick Mahomes not having the huge fantasy fantasy success that we're used to also is Travis Kelsey is not having the fantasy success that we are used to Kelsey having. He's not bad, but he's he not is, centerpiece. He is not. Yeah. He's not lock it in. Travis Kelsey is the number one tight end that you can play this week. Like it's that's a, a worthy thing to mention. It's a wild world that we are here over the last eight weeks. Yeah. Give it to me. Travis Kelsey has two touchdowns. That's do you, strange. Do you have a, uh, do you have, the points per game, like do you have those guys ranked, or are you just looking at you're just looking at Kelsey? Yeah, I, I mean like, he's still he's still performing. Yeah, he's not bad, but, but he's not winning. He's not week. he is not Zeus right now. Well, I mean, look, last year he had how many touchdowns? Twelve, and he's got five so far this year. Yeah. Wow, actually, that's wild. Last year, Travis Kelsey didn't score a touchdown in the final six weeks of the season. Um, he was not a helpful fantasy championship guy last year right now travis kelsey is not even the tight end one on the season is it hawk it That's is hawkinson in terms of total points in terms of total points but they yeah uh i guess points per game is how how high is laporta in points per game i'm curious look in points per game laporta looks like he is like three third yeah would you rather have i guess you'd rather have kelsey still and just hope that it works out yeah, you would. I would. I would rather have Kelsey over any other tight end, obviously. But uh, it, it's not the dominant performances that he had last yeah, year. Yeah, he's still number one in points per game than Hawkinson, Laporta, Andrews, and Kittle. Crazy. Um, also, maybe like the writings on the wall. It does feel that way. It feels that way. Feels like Kelsey's time. If they were to win a championship this year, I, I feel like he could just walk. Yeah, go on tour with his girlfriend. Yeah. Take his number one podcast. Yeah, get out of here. Get out of our way. <laughs> get out of our way. All right, another voicemail. Uh, follow up here, uh, so you can make it quick. But hey, ballers, it's playoff eve. Would you start Mahomes with his recent struggles against Buffalo this week, or Justin Fields against Detroit? Keeping in mind that Justin Fields, coming off of that injury earlier this season, had himself a decent game at Detroit at home. Four point quarterback scoring. Thanks, guys. Love the show. All right, four point scoring. Four point scoring. Comp I thought I had an easy Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes versus Justin Fields. I have them back to back in my rankings, but I do have Patrick Mahomes one spot ahead. 
I would rather rely on Mahomes in a game against Buffalo that – That's where I'm going. Yeah. You know, you, you hope Josh Allen can do what a lot of teams have not done against the Chiefs, which is put up a bunch of points and make Patrick Mahomes have to – do the same because you know he can do the same if if push comes to shove. The Bears, since Fields returned, he's finished. Fields has been the quarterback eight and the quarterback twenty four. So, the risk is too high for me on Justin Fields. I, I like Justin Fields this I week in general. Like I, I would love to start Justin Fields, but I, I love Mahomes matchup this week as well. The we are in the time of year though. Be starting to look at the weather. Uh, cause we're, we're still a ways off, but there are quite a handful of games that are projected for rain and Detroit at Chicago is one of them. Yeah. There's going to be I, over under two fumbles from Justin Fields in the rain. Hmm. I guess that would be one and a half. Yeah. One and a half. One and will and take half the fumbles. over. Yeah. There you go. All right. Another question. Fellas need to win to get in Alexander Madison or Cortland Sutton. Love the show. Alexander Madison versus the Las Vegas Raiders. Matchup is great. His utilization has been poor. Cortland Sutton versus the Los Angeles Chargers. He has just been great. It, Cortland Sutton's just been great. I don't know how you I, – I have finally made the transition. Like, I was I was setting my lineups this week, and I finally made the mental transition to just viewing Cortland Sutton as a really good option. So, I, I'm going to say Cortland Sutton here. He's – he has been a reliable target. He's the number one most important uh, read in this offense. He gets a touchdown every week. This last week he had seven targets. Only caught two of them. But one was a touchdown because yeah. it's in his contract. Has to, has, has to have a touchdown almost every week. Three games this year without a touchdown. That's it. That's amazing. The Chargers are a fantastic matchup for wide receivers. They rank 30th in fantasy points given up uh, on a weekly basis to wide receivers. So I, I'm, I lean Sutton here. I lean Cortland Sutton as well. The part of the Madison problem, there's many problems right now, is the the utilization. You know, they're they're splitting more time with Ty Chandler. We're talking problems for fantasy and like who's we're we're supposed to get a press conference today. I believe. To, but the point is, we're having a press conference today to say who the quarterback is for the Minnesota Vikings. They don't know because Josh Dobbs has unfortunately turned into a pumpkin. And they don't – even if they go to a different option, there's no good options right now. So the, the Minnesota offense is falling apart. And it's it's going to be a, a situation like Brees Hall where, you, sure, you, let's decide. We want to we want to rely on Alexander Madison to, to get us there. Eventually, they're, they're, you're not going to be able to run because they will sell out and say, okay, go ahead, Josh Dobbs. You beat us. And – there's no way it's not. We don't happen. disagree here. Right? There's no way we're not playing Sutton. Right. Madison's been a single digit scorer yes. six of seven weeks. That's been the opposite for Sutton. Um, and what if he catches two touchdowns? I know that's not in his contract, but what if it happened? <laughs> what if it happened? All right. Um, David writes in my playoff start this week. Should I start Dalton Kincaid or Cole Komet this week? Ooh. I'd, Kincaid takes Kansas City on, Komet against Detroit in that potentially rainy game. Yeah, I, I like Komet quite a bit, but I I want I think Kincaid has just been so involved in targets. You look since he came back from his injury in week six, he is I mean, he's on pace over the last six games for 127 targets. The the over under in the Buffalo Kansas City game is is good. Uh, the weather hopefully is not as rainy, so I, I I will go Kincaid. I'll go Kincaid as well. Big question: What do you what do you do? This has come in from a, a number of listeners. What do you do with the Dallas defense? Do you drop them to uh, free up a bench spot? I was gonna bring them up when we were talking about how good Miami is. You know, if when you have to readjust what you think of of fantasy defenses, because the Cowboys mm -hmm. when they play an inferior opponent, they dominate. They are great. Mm -hmm. When they play a capable offense, it's not been good for fantasy. So but they're I mean they're a strong defense. Can you Did you read the schedule? Oh they're no, run please is, give it to it's me. it's as bad as it gets, right? For it, the defense. For yes. the defense. They're playing a Philly, 
Yeah. No, thank you. I don't want to start him against Philly. At Buffalo, at Miami. Uh, yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. And then Detroit. No, thank you. I, I don't, and that's in a that's a week that isn't even – or is that the no, that's uh, week 17? Week. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons why when they hit the waiver wire, like we had one, we had one manager go out and they spent like 40 fab on him. And then the next highest bid was like a dollar. Because I think some people saw this schedule at the end of the year and said, I don't need them now, and I'm not going to need them later. So – They've They're been, capable enough of, of a, a defensive score on any play. I mean, Bland has five of them. So that can always happen. But you run a tremendous uh, – they were negative two last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's not a locked-in guarantee. No, I, I would absolutely drop the Cowboys. And not only um, are you not going to play them, there's better streaming options every single week over the, you know, the, the matchups that are coming up. But they are a landmine. Yeah, people will pick up the Dallas Cowboys because they're such a great defense, and they will play them. And and you're right, Andy. Any of these weeks, you could get a, a defensive touchdown. But you're going to. I mean, their defense is not going to be holding those four upcoming opponents to ten or fifteen points. Those are going to be shootout games, back and forth affairs. Colin writes in from Twitter. What are your expectations for Justin Jefferson? Is he a league winner with the current quarterback situation, or a uh, you know, a future bringer of disappointment. I I would look towards Jamar Chase and Garrett Wilson and these other – I mean, Jamar Chase is probably a more fair comp because he's already established himself as, like, one of the absolute best. Garrett Wilson has the potential, but we've never seen him be a full out-and-out -out star. Justin Jefferson is the best wide receiver in the league, so he's going to be just fine. He'll get his 10 targets – but he obviously is not going to be the league winner that Justin Jefferson is with Kirk Cousins. That's just they're, – they're, they're not going to be able to throw for 350 yards on the regular. And Jamar Hawkinson's got to get some. Addison's got to get some. Like, having all – let's put it this way. I, I don't – maybe Jefferson's the only one that makes people happy, but I don't – my point is all three of them can't. I, I think Addison is the one who's going to take the big hit. Because he should. Because Hawkinson – you know that his role, I feel like, is a little bit more impervious. You know the 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 times that you're looking for the tight end, you know he's going to keep looking there. But the first read in the offense has been Addison, and that's going to be shifting to Justin Jefferson. And you, the, the thing for Chase is remembering how the production has come. So we've had the three weeks here. You know, with a uh, uh, the Burrow got hurt in the Baltimore game. Am I remembering that right? Yeah. But so earlier on. He ended up two for 12. He did have a touchdown, so it wasn't the worst thing that ever happened. The next week, he catches two tip passes that turn into the bulk of his production. And then this week against Jacksonville, great game, hyper-targeted. and But he, the most of his production came on that 76-yard touchdown, which was a a defensive blunder. Jamar Chase made it happen because he's a talented wide receiver, but do you in you know the range of probability where if that play just he gets tackled right there, you're not ecstatic with Jamar Chase. You don't have the you don't have a uh, kind of a false sense of confidence moving into the next week. So I think that's where Jefferson is. He is such a good player that it's hard to find a, a another option on your roster that would be a better play. But you got to you understand what the the realistic outcome for for Jefferson is with whoever the quarterback is. And is there a chance he's limited? I don't think he's so. He's had such he, a long, long time off. Yeah, he's had a, a ton of time off. He has been practicing for the entirety of his window plus an extra bye week. So he's got, he's got you know, a month since he's been active and healthy and practicing. And they wanted to take it slow with him, care about his health. I, I don't think he'll be limited at all. A reminder to drop it like it's hot this week as well. People are going to pick up the one-week, two-week players. Maybe they pick up the Dallas defense and drop an actually better defense for the playoffs. That's possible too just because Dallas has that lore and the history. If you'd like to help the show out, we would appreciate it. Head over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star review, leave us a review over there. Um, it's quick and easy and free in a way that you can help support us. Leave us a review over on Spotify, wherever you listen. Uh, we'd appreciate that. And if you want to watch the show, you can go to YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, subscribe, click that bell. Going to be with you the rest of the season. And then um, also all the time Forever after and that ever. as well. 
forever. So. But huge shout out to everybody out there listening to the show that have made it part of their lives. We appreciate you. The fact that we could, you know, we saw the global charts. So like of all sports podcasts around the globe, including, you know, all all countries, we're the fifth largest sports podcast over the last calendar year. I thought I was four. Well, if we're fourth in in America. There's oh. a, we're fifth in the world. Oh, come on, world. Come on. That means NFL, there's one international, no international more. One international show beats us out. Uh, Something from the UK. I wonder so. if it's those men in blazers. Uh, it's it's not. Sh- it's not. It's not? But, uh, no. It's a good show. Uh, uh, but, but thank you for listening. We appreciate you And with you your all. help, we can take down the Kelseys. Yeah, maybe that should be the thing. <laughs> Maybe we just, I mean, not physically in a fight, but like. Oh, we I, cannot take down the Kelsey. No, I think even if the three, three v two, I, I think, think we could st- take. I we could add the deucers to that six v two. We get the well, whole no, no, team. No, we get the Foot Clan too because this is more of like a tush push situation where we, we couldn't do it on our own, but with right. everyone behind us. Okay. Cross the goal. Line. I think with hundreds of thousands of people. Yes. Then pushing we could, our tushing against <laughs> against the two of them. Against we the could. We have a chance. We have a chance. <laughs> we do. The we six of chance. us. <laughs> Oh, they oh, have the Swifties the, on their side, The though. six of oh, us man. in a fight but against those two Kelseys, we would get annihilated. Yes. yes. That is it for today. Tomorrow starts of the week. Matchup previews. Friday, we got the fantasy face-off, the Hitman Wheel of Shame, and a whole lot more. Yep. <laughs> uh, catch you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.